Disclaimer, these videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Coronel, located off Coronel, Chile and involving the naval forces of the United Kingdom and the German Empire on November 1st, 1914. The Royal Navy, with the assistance of the Japanese, had been looking for German Admiral Maximilian von Spee and his German East Asiatic Commerce Raiders with almost no success. And yes, I'd like to make a reminder here that in World War I, Japan was the allies of the Americans, French, and British. In October, however, the UK's luck had changed and some of Admiral Spee's communications with German command were intercepted. They revealed the intended routes that Spee wished to attack the trading ships along the west coast of South America. The only Royal Navy forces in the area were under command of Admiral Christopher Craddock and his West Indies squadron. This comprised of the armored cruisers Good Hope that acted as the squadron's flagship, then Monmouth, another armored cruiser, with a light cruiser Glasgow and an old converted liner the Otranto providing support. Unfortunately, Craddock was outgunned in all areas by Spee's five vessels, led by Spee's personal armor cruiser, the Scharnhorst. Spee himself had heard of Craddock's ship, the Glasgow, being sighted in the area and decided to sink the UK fleet one ship at a time. As Spee searched for Craddock, Craddock had radioed back continuously to Royal Headquarters asking for reinforcements and attempting to stay hidden as much as possible. While the two older ships were sent from Royal Navy headquarters, neither reached Craddock in time for the fight. On October 31st, 1914, Craddock intercepted German radio communications that indicated the Leipzig, one of the light cruisers of Spees, was searching for him in the area. Craddock decided he would rather take the fight to a single enemy than wait for them all, and he ordered a squadron to stop it. Unfortunately for him, he was unable to intercept the Leipzig in time, and on November 1st, found himself facing off with all five ships of Spees' squadron at 4.30 p.m. as darkness was fallen. It is unknown why Craddock, when he saw the rest of Spee's squadron, didn't retreat into the oncoming darkness to Canopus, a safe area 300 miles south. Instead, Craddock insisted on having a showdown with Spee. He did order the Otranto to flee south, but he stayed with his three ships. The seas were rough and Craddock was unable to get within firing range of Spee until full sunset at 7 p.m. Spee was an experienced admiral and realized his ships could outrange Craddock's squadron so he ordered his smaller ships to spread out and he kept Craddock and his fleet beyond Craddock's range as long as possible, while shelling and devastating Craddock's ship, the Good Hope itself. Eventually, Craddock perished with his ship, the Good Hope, as the Monmouth itself was destroyed beside it. The Glasgow, however, was able to retreat into the darkness after the Otranto. The only survivors of the UK squadron was the Glasgow and the Otranto, resulting in 1,660 Royal Navy sailors perishing in the ocean, along with their two armor cruisers. Meanwhile, Spee's fleet suffered almost no damage, with only three sailors injured. The battle had huge ramifications for the Royal Navy. This was the first naval defeat since the War of 1812 and was a shock to the House of Commons. Winston Churchill claimed that Craddock attacked because he was, quote, feeling he could not bring the enemy immediately to action as long as he kept with Canopus. He decided to attack them with his fast ships alone, in the belief that even if he himself were destroyed, he would inflict damage on them, which would lead to their destruction. Unquote. Of course, none of this quota could be proven as actually true. However, for the German Admiral Maximilian von Spee, while they certainly had a tremendous victory, he believed himself that it was merely a delay to the inevitable destruction of his German naval squadron. He believed it so much that when they arrived at the German port of Valparaiso Harbor and were welcomed by the Germans that lived there, he refused to join in on the celebrations. It is said when he was presented with a bouquet of flowers, he refused them, commenting, quote, these will do nicely for my grave, unquote. No one would realize how accurate his words were just five weeks later. Join us next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.